How's it going, everybody? This is Carlos, our former legendary player, and now turned into a legendary team owner, now turned into legendary Valorant professional player. And I'm here with two legends themselves, Lothar and Orb. These gentlemen have been playing Valorant for as long as humanity remembers. They know every trick and tip available. Now, this is gonna be, it's gonna be surprising for some of you. You're gonna learn things that you have not been able to learn up until this moment. So open your ears because Orban and Lothar are here. How you guys doing? I'm good. That was, you should do this for a living. Why you, why you do this whole team owning thing? Huh? I don't know, dude. I just like losing you hair, I guess. <laughs> Did you actually write <laughs> okay, this down well. or, you know? I was that off the cuff? I haven't. Wow. I haven't. I think it's just Red Bull. Just drink your Red Bull. <clears throat> this is what it does to you. Listen to me. Everybody's saying whether this is a CSGO killer. Some people say whether it's an Overwatch killer. Is this the Battle Royale killer? It, it, it's, it's a, in my opinion, a game that will take a lot of people from every other FPS game and just put them into Valorant. It doesn't matter what game you play. You want to play Valorant at some point, And if you're going to like it, you're going to stick with it. So what? So both of you, okay? I want to do a 3, 2, 1, and then both of you answer at the same time. Yeah, what's the closest game Valorant resembles? Three, two, one, go. Counter Strike 1.6. CSGO. All right. Mm. Interesting. Mm. Interesting. Hold on. So you, you guys have to give me your thoughts here. So why CSGO? Or uh, well, I just think the the I think I'm gonna say the same reasons as Lothar. I think the movement alone, like yes, there's abilities which I would say Overwatch, but I feel like the game leans more towards uh, CSGO. Than, than Overwatch, because I feel like they, you know, abilities and whatnot are utility to me. Uh, but the movement, how you move, how the guns operate, like how you have to actually stop and shoot, like running gunning, like in Call of Duty doesn't work here, running gunning like in Overwatch doesn't work. Uh, so that would be my reasoning, but I'm assuming he's going to say similar movement, right, Lothar? Well, I would say definitely what is um, resemb a resemblance for me for 1.6 and 1.5 and even 1.3 is that the fact the game is all about, like, let's say, not any roundliness. It's all about sharp edges. The game has graphics that is being in, in, uh, made and design made for competitive play. What was, what was um, Basically, what was an accident for Counter-Strike 1.5 and 1.6, in Valorant, it's a deliberate choice to make the game as much, com uh, uh, as much com competitive as possible. Everything yeah, is that's solid. True. That's true. Everything is m designed in mind to be competitive and it okay. was about gameplay in counter strike 1.5 and 1.6 i have fun playing the game i don't care how it looks you know okay. yeah it's all about making like the characters pop like if you come around a corner you will be able to detect an enemy like the, he can't hide in you know he can't blend in with the environment around there are him. no shadows so there, there's yeah 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 shadows sharp edges and not a lot of i don't know what to call it like fluff on the map like extra like plants and and whatever that could get in the way yeah, right you know, um, so I, I so I do agree with that. That's actually um, a good point. I, maybe it is more like 1.6 in terms of like how uh, I don't know unobstructed the maps are. Mm -hmm. Interesting, guys. I want to I want to speak about different sort of parts, right? Because the way I envision this game is divided in different elements. Number one is agents. Number two is weapons. Number three is aiming. Number four is maps and landscape. Number five is economy, and number six is team play, and what team. Uh, you know, the, the weight team has in all of this. So let's touch on each point very briefly. So agents, give me a single one-liner on each agent. For example, if we were talking about League of Legends Annie, uh, she'll flash on you and fuck you up, stunning you, and you're dead. So give me for each agent, <laughs> like a one-liner. Well, shit, I don't know who to begin with. Let's go. You uh, start. Um, oh, choose one. Jet, gotta go fast. Uh, then, all right. Uh, or uh, Lothar, your turn. I would say Sova, Wolhack, and AOE through the walls. That sounds fucking OP. I'm not gonna lie to you. Orb? <laughs> Cypher. Um, Ooh. Uh, Anti-flank expert. Lothar. Um, breach. Yep. Stuns. AOE. And knockups. Basically, man fight. Okay. It's like a tank thing. Yep. Uh, Viper. Gas. Oh, that motherfucker. Toxic gas. That motherfucker. Does it last a lot, by the way? 
I guess. The ultimate yeah. last so she I'll, is in the yeah. ultimate. Oh, okay. So she can leave it, and then it will start going down, and she needs to re-enter the ult area. Otherwise, it, it disappears. Okay, that's insane. So you know she's either close by or most likely in the thick of the smoke. Okay. How many agents are left? Should be. Well, there's nine total. Oh, there's nine total. Okay, so there's three left. Uh, let's say Sage, um, Ice Walls, and Slow. And Resurrection. Oh, I've seen that. That, that one looks really fun, actually. Yeah, she, she's like the essential, I would say, in almost every single team. Yeah, say, it, you need to have a Sage. Okay. Like, the rest, the heal, the wall. Like, the wall, both me and Lothar... Well, I don't know if you've changed your mind since last time we spoke, Lothar, but the wall is... The wall is too strong. Yeah, it has too it, much doesn't HP. Doesn't it have, like, 3,000 HP? Yeah, it's way too much HP. Other than that, it's okay, but it, it has too much HP. You know the fire guy? Um, What's his name? Phoenix. Um, Phoenix. Like, if he could melt the wall with one of his abilities, that could be a counter. Like, wouldn't that be interesting? It, it would make a counter play, but at the same time, then we would re require to be to be in a pick and back pick and ban phase, or maybe just pick yeah. phase, something like that for a competitive I'm mode. I'm sure they'd add it at some point, some pick and ban phase, just like Rainbow Six. Yeah. The, the problem is that I mean, when you have a counter play like that, you're pushed to play a character, a specific character. And I feel like in Valorant, they want to make um, every character to be playable on its own without to be like picked as a meta choice. So g g give Orb, give me a one-liner about Phoenix. Um, yes, Phoenix, like um, uh, Fire Lord, uh, fire damage and fire healing. That doesn't make any fucking sense. But you know what? Let's move on. <laughs> he can heal. He can heal in his own fire. Oh, he can heal in his own fire. What about he can mates? heal in his own fire. fire? No, 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 no. You kill them in the fire. They take damage. Okay. They take damage. <laughs> okay, so self heal in the. Okay, got it. Don't have brimstone left. <laughs> which is basically pixel point perfect smokes and an AOE ultimate. Oh, that actually, I feel like that one, from what I've seen, seems actually really needed. Yeah, I would say Sage I mean, the, and Brimstone the, the smokes, in competitive play yeah. will be the two most needed characters in every single team. Let's, let's move on to weapons, shall we? So, mm -hmm. um, is every weapon one hit kill in the head? Not every single one of them. Vandal, which is like an equivalent of AK from CS, kills mm -hmm. up to 50 meters, which is basically almost every single point of the map. Uh, because I think there's only one one point on the map, and that's the um, that's on Haven, uh, where sorry Haven, where you have over 50 meters. But apart from that, there's basically up to 50 what meters. What about this so three base map in right? on C? That, that, three yeah, base map Haven. on C in the long. Yes, exactly. On C long, there might be over 50 meters if you stand on two like walls at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. All right. So in general, weapons, how do they feel? I feel like they feel great. I, feel, I mean, something that my uh, my stream asked me yesterday when I was showing a bunch of, a bunch of gameplay was, um, can you use every weapon? Like, or do you have like two weapons that you always go to? I feel like I can use. I feel like I use most weapons, even when into the LMGs. Bro, I, the, the I saw you with the LMG, and I turned off the, the stream. <laughs> the Odin okay. LMG is super strong as long as you're pre ADS. I feel like because you don't have, like, you can shoot a little bit faster. Um, but you run um, faster or slower depending on the weapon you were wearing. You having? I do believe that SMGs have a faster, uh, a little bit faster movement than. Uh, um, heavy machine guns, but I'm not certain about that. Like, oh, have okay. to check. But in terms of using weapons, I feel like so, most so, we weapons are viable. Everything from pistols to SMGs to ARs, LMGs, and snipers. What's the one weapon from any game available in your head right now that resembles Valorant as a whole the most? With the weight of the weapon, how it feels, you know, how you can't shoot and run and stuff like that, like... AK from AK? Counter Strike. AK forty seven. Yeah, CSGO I would or say that's the first. That's the first weapon that comes to mind for me too. AK. For, from one point six or from, or from CS:GO. I would say one point six. Okay, so you can also yeah, spray sure. quite well. Yes. You, so okay, th this is there's a big difference in Valorant when you compare it to Counter Strike, whatever version we play, uh, because mm -hmm. basically how it works in Valorant is that you start spraying, and after, if I remember correctly, the sixth bullet in your spray. The longer you shoot, the next bullets have a smaller but increasing chance of having a deviation from uh, the spray pattern. So, mm -hmm. although every single weapon has a spray pattern that you could learn, there is a chance the longer you spray, it will be a little bit different and you will have to counter-react um, to what is happening with the recoil. So, there's no, there's no way of 
perfecting it, you know? Like So being... essentially, what you're saying is that um, one taps may end up being uh, more... Yes, one taps and burst, and burst um, fire yeah. will be dominant, I would say. Taps and bursts. That's I mean, good. I actually like that. That that's highlight real potential. I mean, that's what this game is. Like, if you're looking for a game with hero capabilities, and what I mean by that is somebody clutching, right? One v five, or you know, whatever the scenario is, you're gonna find that in this game. Mm -hmm. And I love that. Like, I I want there to be the underdog that can, you know, if he plays really well, if he uses abilities and plays it just right, he can outplay uh, multiple people. Because okay. like in Overwatch, if you do the comparison to Overwatch, in Overwatch is like. If you lose one of your guys early in a team fight, then you have to like all back off because you're all gonna wipe because you don't have that key ability that's gonna carry this whole bubble okay. of teammates through the yeah. other bubble of teammates. That's interesting. So we spoke a little bit about aiming when speaking about weapons. So we're not gonna touch too much more into it, but I think a good sort of headline is, uh, you know, a spray will not be as good as burst and one taps, which is to me amazing. I actually like that a lot. Moving on to maps and landscapes. So one thing that people seem to be on the same page on is that the, the, the colors of the maps and the landscapes are actually perfect to be able to differentiate every single model. So you, it's really hard, just like it happens in Warzone or in Call of Duty in general, or yeah, like it happens in Counter-Strike sometimes, that you don't see the models, the heads, the people running around or staying back in somewhere mm -hmm. uh, because the map is just so dull and the models are so dull and y everything sort of meshes together. Th is this correct? Yeah, and especially in CSGO now with the addition of the agents, it's it's actually horrible and I've seen a lot of backlash from the pro players and, and casters. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, it's like you, you can see a guy in some place on the cache. There's one place with one skin, you actually don't see the guy because he blends perfectly. So yep. this is not going to happen in Valorant and um, there's even a, a specific design uh, in mind that they have that the devs were talking about. So basically the maps are always designed this way that there's no, basically there's no additional de decals, um, I mean any details and decals or whatever you say that in, in English, on the walls up on, up on the point where the character can be like twice of its size. So basically, okay. if there are any like windows or any like, uh, you know, another mm, additional details on, on, on the wall is going to be above the character, not on him. So you can see him perfectly. And this is why it's so like the game is, is so clear. There's, there's basically like I didn't have a single situation when I was playing when I couldn't really? see someone. Bro, you that know? is crazy to me because I this is my biggest issue with shooters. Like I many times don't see people. Mm -hmm. Many, many, you know, many times where I'm playing with, I'm like, you know, don't you see the guy? I, I, I don't. It's just it meshes yeah. with the environment too well, you know. And some eyes just can't really catch it, and I'm, I'm, I'm one of those. It's a big so issue for happy. colorblind people as well, you know. When I, I have a little bit of that, you know, when I see uh, blue and red, it doesn't feel good. Mm -hmm. So in this game, you won't have problems or like green that. Green and red sometimes. There's also colorblind mode in this game, but it basically helps you even more uh, than in other games because. You, you see clear-cut colors in this game, right? There's okay. no, like, um, blended green going black or something like that. There's no uh, colors that, that mesh with each other. And even yeah, when you... That's good. When you look at smokes, an example, or the walls that the characters are, are, are using, every single one of them is one solid color. This is why people are, like, annoyed. Oh, it looks like an alpha game from Mobile Paladins or something like that, you know? When they were looking, PUBG Mobile, somebody said in my stream. Yeah, because they, <laughs> really? they were looking at Viper, yeah. like, smoke grenade, or, or like, whatever you call it, the cloud, right, from the, from the gas. And it's yeah. solid green color. No fla no flashy things. Just a solid green color. And you can yeah. see through it, and you can only go into it, and it looks, like, very basic. And people are like, oh, yeah, like it's so ugly. But it's not about that. Yeah. It's not about the visibility and it's clarity. clarity. Yeah. Fortnite is a decent job at this. I feel, I feel like it's one of the few games that I had... Not too many problems with. I yeah, knew I it, often where they were. Yeah, it, it's uh, Fortnite's pretty good about that. Although there are still issues, other issues in Fortnite and visibility because there's a clutter of information on it. Like there's too many, mm -hmm. like too when much. you build a wall, there's too much stuff flying around, like pieces of metal, like I gathering and so on. But yeah, but Fortnite <coughs> has a very similar um, aesthetic uh, to Valorant when you look at it. 
it's more yeah. um, comic book like, you know. Yeah. And because of that, you Which, have. Which by the way, I think is great. Like I think that esports and photorealism doesn't match. It's right? never gonna be hand in hand. Mm -hmm. I agree. I think it's very unlikely. Yeah. Now, when I play games like when I play games like Warzone, man, I feel like there's Warzone looks like like a, 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 kind of a, a little bit of a dumbed down battlefield to me. Mm -hmm. There's so much detail. Like if somebody's peeking in a window, I, that's hard to tell from really really it's far really away. Whereas, I mean, whereas in this game, you can clearly clearly see if there is, you know, just getting on a site. You don't have to check every corner, you know, super diehard. Like, you'll see them if they're there. You yeah, don't have awesome. to double check or triple check any corners. That is what makes me the most hype, hands down. Uh, you that know what, makes me, the most what makes me the most hype? The what? net code and the anti-cheat. This is something I'm looking forward to. Mm -hmm. Because the game, yeah. the devs were showing, like, how the net code works um, in the game. And I'm sure that whenever you were playing Counter-Strike, at some point you had situations where you clearly shot the guy in the head, and there was even blood on him or something but you didn't oh, kill yeah. him or you didn't get, deal any damage and this is because the the hitbox is like next to the guy not on him right so basically there's like always delay when someone mm -hmm. is moving because you you basically need to hit like something that is behind him not on the skin in most cases when you play in online games not in land games right and in in valorant the developers were really proud um of making the netcode work way better and basically aligning the hitbox and the skin itself, which makes it, like, for me, very satisfying to shoot. Because when you aim at a guy, you hit. When you miss a guy, yeah. you clearly you miss. miss. Yeah, yeah. That's good. That's very important. I heard that um, wall, hawking, wall hawking is literally impossible. Because, so, mm -hmm. the, the, because the people that you're playing against never are never truly in your game until they are in sight so then wall hacking is actually literally impossible yep uh, my only concern with that is because i i know that some other games tried to do that but couldn't do it well because it's all about um how responsive the game will be in the server of course and the client uh, when someone shows up on your screen right how big will be the delay because you need to render the guy the moment he shows up not not before, right? So there might be a small delay. And I am not, not an expert when it comes to game development, but that is like the only issue that I can see that might happen. But it seems like it works. Like we, we played online. We didn't play on the LAN. And I never had an issue that, you know, someone is peeking and I got killed without seeing the guy or something like that. Again, many people say Counter-Strike killer, although that is hard to believe because Counter-Strike has been there for 20 years and it might be there for another 20 in some capacity. Uh, some people say Overwatch killer, but you can't kill something that's already dead. <laughs> so then, what about Battle Royale killer? Battle I don't know, why does every game have to beat down another? Why does it always have to be, this is gonna kill... I mean, well, I get the appeal... here with your positivism. Listen, We're here I, for I, clickbaity I, stuff. I get it, you want a game to be like number one. That's what you mean by killing, right? It's gonna t take over No, no, just Twitch dismantling, or over. evaporating other games, okay. other titles. There's a finite amount, currently, uh, amount of fans that play FPS games. So, some titles will suffer more than others when it comes to losing people to, pl to play Varant. And I think those titles will be... Um, even though the game resembles Counter-Strike the most, I don't think Counter-Strike will lose the most. The, the most people that will go... Overwatch, surely. It's 100% Overwatch. Because yes. people, even when when they didn't try the game, even though they watch the gameplay, they still think it's Overwatch. Which... Yeah, because from the outside, not in the deep... When you play it, I'm assuming, the deeper it gets, the more you realize it's nothing like Overwatch. But from the outside, because of the graphics, it looks a bit more alike, right? Yeah, people are like, oh... It's um, cartoony graphics and uh, heroes with skills. It must be Overwatch. So yeah, yeah, yeah. basically, mm. I hear you. This is gonna be like the first impression that almost every single one, um, almost every single one uh, coming from Overwatch will have. So he will try out that game, but they might stick with it even though it's so different from Overwatch, and uh, because they will, I don't know, maybe instantly like the fact that they can play and carry in the game without you know having to shoot shields for 30 minutes per game. Um, but in general, uh, I feel like then, after that, after Overwatch, Counter-Strike might see the biggest hit. But at the same time, I don't think it matters. Because Counter-Strike uh, Counter 
first of all, it's 20 years old, as you said. The community is hard, hardcore. Let's talk about the two more things. Let's keep it short, okay? Mm -hmm. So economy. What happens if you lose the first round? How many times you have to eco? Walk me through the economy in general. How powerful can you get when you snowball economy, etc.? So for winning a round, you get 3k. For losing a round, you get 1.9k. My impressions from playing the game were that you can force too much, you know? It seems like the game is too generous with the cash for now. But those are only numbers. This can be changed many, many times. Mm -hmm. So it feels that almost every single round, unless someone is losing like 0 or 6, they will still just buy deagles and armor and can be a potent, potent threat, you know? So especially since you don't lose your utility because you die, yeah. it still stays in the inventory. If that would change, so you don't get in an example the utility that you lost during the previous round, probably would be an enough impact on, on, on the game to actually make it less forcible. But in general, okay. right now it feels um, the game is too generous with the cash, but there's still decisions to be made. What I really like though, is that you can give your teammates weapons with just one click instead of dropping them. It's so good. That's like nice. it, it, that's what, what, what we need to focus on, like yeah, with the economy, yes, things can change, but their whole buy system with buying guns, first of all, like we talked before, like all guns are essentially viable. So that's a really good thing, right? Think of balance. The fact that you can buy and sell items. So if I buy an op and then Carlos says, what are you doing? We're going to eco. I can sell the op and we can be good. Yeah. We don't have to like do the half yeah, force. So like, yeah, full cost. Yeah, yeah, you get full back. But you can That's only, good. you can only uh, sell back stuff you bought that round. So you can't pick up an course, op yeah. in the previous round and then sell it when you, when you mm -hmm. get to your buy menu. But I love that abilities are so cheap because that will make people actually buy and use the abilities. I do like that they also stay from round to round if you don't use them. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you guys know me as a legendary mechanical player, right? Not only okay. you do, okay. right? Orb? Of course, I am known for my aim as well, right? What I'm not very known for is for being a team player. I'm not a team player. I don't want to. I'm not a support player. You word for me. You heal me, right? So, so you want to play Jack? Can I solo carry in Valorant? Yes, hundred percent. Yeah, you can. So it's not like this Overwatch bullshit that I have to no, like, no, wait no. for my team no, to push no, the no. payload. There's, there's, there's none of that. No. You, you have the hero capabilities, the hero moments in this game, and uh, somebody of your stature can definitely do a lot of work. I, I need a race. I need a race. So I can solo carry, which makes me happy. Uh, you know what I heard? You get one kill and you hear peep. You get you get another kill and you hear peep. And you get another kill and you hear peep. And you get another kill and you hear peep. So the game is like hyping you up to get more kills. Yeah. There's there's an announcer. Oh, yeah. There's like a clear sound when you get headshots as well. So And kills. Bam. It, Man. It's pretty good. Can't wait. All right, guys. Thank you so much for helping me out understand the game a little bit better. I now you know, had no doubts before, but I certainly have even less doubts now that I will be the number one player in the world. Uh, I will be ranked immortal. So which, <laughs> which organization will you sign with? I'll sign with Origin or Fnatic, probably. I knew it, man. I knew it. Oh, Twitch.tv slash orb. Twitch.tv slash, slash Lothar HS still? <laughs> Who do you think would do best from our G2 players in Valorant and why? Lothar, you start. I would say from the get-go, Rainbow Six team uh, with Pango, you know, spearheading the entire team would be doing the best because they're used to, um, you know, to use different uh, utilities from all the characters mm -hmm. they play. All the drones and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Right? Cool. Now, Orb? Well, if you're picking the Rainbow guys, I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with Kenny S then. I mean, the, the CS guys, the CS guys overall are going to have a re... I mean, it's going to be easy for them to jump in. They're, they're already going to be... I mean, obviously, they're pro players, but this is going to be right up their alley. Thank <laughs> you so much, guys. All right. Thank you.